Have you ever tried using Material UI in Unity? Did you buy some kit from Asset Store and then wondered why you had to download thousands of images inside your project for some simple flat elements? Well, that's mostly because the current UI system never had in mind apps that are not games. UI in Unity was always special. It gives you a lot of artistic freedom, while you also get used with its quirkiness pretty fast. But it has a few problems, just to state a few. Style is not separated from the actual UI. Style is most of the times just 9 sliced textures, some texts and vertical horizontal arrangements. Reusing styles means using prefabs, which is great but not amazing. Also, why do we need an image component for a button to be clickable? Animation is difficult and not performant with classical built-in solutions. You'll have to use third party like twin libraries which I actually love to use. Anchor and pivot system is pretty interesting but a bit hard to grasp at first. Shift alt click all the way. Also do I really have to go inside an image editor software every time I need a bit of a different border size, border radius, shadow or color? Yes I usually do. Don't get me wrong though the old UI is still not deprecated. There are great third-party libraries that solves many issues I stated. We still need it for special UI elements or for world space UI, for example for VR use cases. But for classical UI use cases, you really have to know... Okay, so Unity is slowly transitioning towards this new UI system named UI Toolkit, where all the UI is held inside XMLs. Uh, Unity XMLs. Styles can be in line, but now you have the option to keep them separated and reusable using USS files inspired from the web CSS, while all the behavior is left to be inside C Sharp, just like web does with JavaScript. The good news is web is a proven way to responsive UI, so it shouldn't, at least in theory, be a lot of trial and error until Unity gets it right. From now on, all the UI will be separated in these documents far away from our game scene, so separation of concerns is way improved. We still kinda have a canvas, but we'll call it a panel, and it will be defined inside an UI document. You can use UI documents not just as screens, but as templates, so no more prefabs here. Anyway, inside of it, every prefab game object hierarchy becomes a visual tree, and each tree is a tree of visual elements, kinda like game objects, but not with components, but with styles. So now we have this XML. XML is readable, but not so fun to work with. Therefore, Unity gives us the UI builder, because Unity likes visual editors. And one great feature is you don't have to know by heart everything about USS, you have everything here. And you also got a, a bunch of pre-made templates and controls here. Side note, the draw order of visual elements is done top down, by the way, and the draw order of UI documents is defined by this sort order. Unity kinda tossed away the old styling system with small exceptions, deciding that web developers did it better before. So better learn a bit of CSS if you wanna be good with this. One interesting particularity to web is that we don't use all the other display types, but we kept just one, the flex. So focus your learning journey on around CSS flex. Link in description by the way. Besides display, CSS uses position to define how your position relates to the parent. For this, we have just two again. It can be relative or absolute position. Margin border padding. Simple yet essential. Margin is outside, padding is on the inside of our box, and border is between. For images, you can use Unity textures, but keep in mind components do not auto-scale for your image to fit, so you have to give them some sizes. Also, 9 slice mode for textures is still here. That's something Unity decided to keep, interestingly, and I'm very happy about this. All styles are on the right side of the UI builder, but setting those up only works for small stuff. It can get redundant very fast. For this we have USS files to create reusable styles. They know to whom to apply styles by using selectors. With selectors we identify elements based on name, class and hierarchy. In UI Builder you can add related USS files by pressing on the plus button here. 
There are lots of selectors in both USS and CSS, so I'm going to leave a link in description to a fun interactive game where you can learn them better. It's made for CSS, but it's basically the same thing. Use variables where needed, for instance for colors or fonts. Inspired by CSS microclasses, since I was using Tailwind CSS before, I personally keep styles short and combine them for more flexibility. So I have two similar objects with different colors and different size without creating specific classes for each of them. CSS microclasses are just what I use, so you can of course use any standard you like. I always have a general style sheet that holds the general theme of the app. So I have one big style sheet that has the generic stuff, and then I have a lot smaller style sheets based on the templates, based on the screens I have, and so on. There are three big types of things you can do in code to get you started. Querying elements. Using query, you can use USS like selectors to find your elements. Or you can use just Q to find elements by their names slash IDs. Secondly, you can dynamically add, update or delete visual tree elements inside your UI documents whenever you wish. Once grabbing an element, you can either set whatever attribute or style to them dynamically, or you can register several callbacks to them, especially coming from keyboard, mouse, pointer. Keep in mind, the road an event takes is trickling down from the root element all the way down to the target element, and then it bubbles up all the way to the root again. Usually the callbacks are called along the bubble up phase, but you can enforce it being called during the trickle down phase. It's a bit of a new concept, but you'll get used to it, just keep in mind it exists. For each component, you can create a custom element. This basically means you can inherit visual element class to build your own type of element. You also need a factory that has your new element and a set of custom traits. You can see these traits as basically the set of public attributes over here. You can add new ones that can be numbers, enums, toggles, colors or strings. Every time one changes, your elements call this function again called init. In the init function you can set styles, add new child elements and so on. It will all happen live which is pretty cool because you don't have to press play every time to see how your UI will look like. In init you also can register callbacks. Here I usually just throw generic events from the visual elements so I can use them externally. Well, now that we have these three pieces of puzzle, let's put them together with a few tips to use in your actual project. I usually make a parent game object where I'll have all my screens. I tried enabling disabling them, but it's not very stable and it crashes a lot. They are not taught for that. Therefore, instead, you should make a system where you edit the display type of the root element in flex or hidden based on your needs. For this, I make for each game object a custom script that inherits an interface I call iScreen. An interface with three methods at least, init, hide and show. In the init I grab all my elements, register the callbacks and so on, just like in the custom elements. The hide function sets display none for the root, while show makes it a flex. I usually do this for screens and for smaller components I usually use the custom elements I just talked about. Going to the UI builder, I try to name everything properly, of course, but I also rely heavily on style sheets. I have at least a general one and a screen specific one. For the general one, I try to keep it as elementary as possible, header types, color definitions, button styles and so on. My final goal is to touch UI builder styles as less as possible. For custom reusable elements, I'm still looking for a perfect flow. Right now I create a template that usually has a custom element script attached. But the problem with templates is that they are hard to derivate. No child is editable in the UI builder. I try to dynamically set styles using classes and USS selectors as much as possible. For this you have selectors for when an element is hovered, active, focused, selected and so on. The last thing I'd like you to know about UI Toolkit is what you can find here in Window, UI Toolkit. You have here three things. The first one is called Samples. For instance, you can see here what styles there are and what each style does. You can see how to create a button and how to attach a function to its uh, mouse up event. You can learn to do scrollers, toggles, radio buttons, text fields and much more. 
Just looking through all these things can actually be a good first step on how to use UI Toolkit. The second thing I wanted to show you is using the debugger. This debugger is amazingly simple. So basically we select here the game view, so this part, and then we can see all the visual elements that are active here. More than that, I can just press pick element and select whatever element I want. And just like in Google Chrome, I can edit all these CSS functions and see uh, live changes on the UI. One thing to note is you should keep those and do the changes in your CSS files afterwards. The last option inside Window UI Toolkit is the Event Debugger. This debugger is for all the events that happen inside our game. And now you can see here all the move events, uh, all the click events. You can learn more about them. You can see what elements they went through, how they propagated. It's a great tool to use whenever your clicks or other events don't go through, whenever you feel like they don't work. Great, that's the gist of it. It's an exciting time for UI Toolkit as every month or two Unity brings great improvements on this. Meanwhile, you can get used with the system and you can already consider it production ready if you're ready to tackle some issues on the way. Once you understand what CSS, uh, sorry, USS has to offer and understand how Flex works, when to use pixel, when to use percentages, absolute versus relative, you're basically good to go. I strongly encourage you to start using this toolkit as it's a proven way to create UI systems, since it's already a proven system on the web. But I also encourage you not to 100% ditch the old canvases. Keep them around for the, some specific use cases you have, especially when UI is integrated in your worlds and not just on screen, such as VR apps. If you'd like to see more Unity system overviews, please like, subscribe and suggest in the comments what else should we try synthesize in a video or two. See you next time!